Today I want to talk about preventive maintenance on this Dodge Sprinter, it's the 2006 with the Mercedes-Benz engine. Um, we bought it new 12 years ago, it has 115,000 miles on it. I want to briefly go over just a standard preventive maintenance quickly, but I'm interested more in explaining what you need to do after you get some higher mileage on it. Uh, First of all, standard maintenance, uh, of course, change your oil every 10,000 miles and put the synthetic Mobile One Zero W40 with a filter. That costs about 100 bucks every time I do it. And you're going to need to get a set of uh, torque sockets to work on these engines. Um, so far, I've replaced three. This would be my third fuel filter. Never had any problems with any. I just replace it because it's, it's a good idea. It's recommended. Um, the air filter it's down in here. In order to get to it, you got to take this heat shield off this hose, and you slide flip two clips and slide that over and get to it. The cabin filters up underneath this insulation um, there's a little box there and two clips you slide it back and you drop it out um, as you can see my covers lived its better days and have it wired up um, but after you get a hundred thousand miles or so on these then you have to start thinking about some other things one of the things you got to think about is changing the transmission fluid. It takes this very expensive transmission fluid. It's European. And uh, in order to change it, you got to take the, take the pan off the bottom. And then right here is where the dipstick goes. It doesn't have a dipstick. you got to buy this aftermarket dipstick. And uh, when you take the pan off, you want to change the filter and in addition to that there's a electrical sensor in the side of the transmission that has an o-ring that will start leaking eventually and if you don't know it's leaking you're going to lose your fluid and eventually ruin your tranny so you got to change that the o-rings on that switch um, in addition to that uh, there's the glow plugs which I just replaced. Uh, someone on online was talking about made a video on how to tear their engine head off and the reason is they broke a glow plug off. Well what I did was as per their recommendation I bought this PB blaster and uh, show you where the glow plugs are. I sprayed the BP blaster down in the holes around the glow plugs down in there. Left to set for about two weeks. And then uh, the day I was going to do it, I blew the pocket out real good with an air hose. Got a uh, like 10 millimeter socket with a uh, quarter inch. It's a deep socket, six point, and I was able to break them all loose without any problem. Before I pulled them out, after I loosened them up several turns, I blew all the dirt out of the pockets really good because if, once you pull that out, that dirt's going to fall down in alongside the piston. So, took care of that. There's nothing wrong with the, the ones, that were, ones that were in there. I just decided it was time to replace it. Another thing I replaced was uh, some pulleys on the serpentine belt. Um, and I printed out in instructions on how to lace that, and I keep it with me, carry it with me, along with my old belt. If uh, I should ever have to replace that along the road, once it falls off, it's very confusing as to figure out how to lace it. So, but anyhow, also on it, here's the crankshaft, and uh, just to the right of the crankshaft. There's a tensioner that takes a 17 millimeter socket. You have to have a 12 point. 
Um, you can't use a six point. So you gotta make sure you have that and that it'll enable you to loosen the tension on the tensioner to get the belt off or put a new one on. Um, and then over the years, there have been some issues that I run into and I wanna share that with you. Uh, the most common problem I ran into even after I only had 20,000 miles was a turbo resonator. This is a turbo resonator and uh, first time it went, put the uh, engine into lip mode and uh, heard this swishing sound and, and it was notable and shortly thereafter I was in lip mode. Well, once I realized what it was, um, I started carrying them with me. I've gone through probably half a dozen of them. At one point, someone recommended to me that I buy this aftermarket one that is uh, actually just an aluminum tube and it doesn't have any baffles in it like this one does. And I put that on for a while. It didn't seem to work okay. It wasn't, there was a little bit of noise. You could hear a little bit of noise, but it wasn't bad. But shortly thereafter, my harmonic balancer went. It has an outer ring that's fused to the inner pulley with vulcanized rubber. I don't have the outer ring here. Just, But anyhow, the outer ring started coming off and it made a horrible sound when I left off the gas stop at a light or something. It seemed, wasn't too loud if I was driving on the highway. It was kind of balancing out, but anyhow, after I realized what it was, uh, I got a new one and put it on there. Very important if you hear noise under the hood, uh, pay attention because what I've heard is most people ignore the noise when that harmonic balancer is coming apart. And they'll run it until the outer ring breaks off completely. And what it does then, it'll it'll tear up the serpentine belt and even go through the radiator. It's going to get out of there one way or the other once it comes off. And uh, it's not good. So anyhow, I ended up replacing two of these. Uh, any, and uh, what I had, just keep in mind, I had to, you have to have a 30 millimeter socket or one and three sixteenths, it's the same, it's a six point and it's a very, very tight bolt. Well, after I, the, the, the struggle with the first one was to keep the engine from turning, I made a spanner wrench that fits into the forks. I carry that with me now. I also carry some pipes that I put on the handle to give me extended leverage or even bank it against the ground so I can loosen that bolt. Um, twice I replaced that. I went back to the factory turbo resonator and uh, I just carry this with me, uh, the aluminum one, as a second spare. But I really didn't trust the fact that it wasn't resonating. I thought maybe there's a connection between the harmonic balancer going and the turbo resonator not truly resonating. Not sure, don't know. Not really a mechanic, just a do-it-yourself person. Let me show you where the turbo resonator is. Took the heat shield off and removed the one side of this hose. This hose here, so you can see it's underneath there. There it is. The bracket for it, I have the other one laying here. The bracket is hard to get to where the two mounting screws are 10 millimeter. You gotta crawl underneath and reach up underneath to turn them with a, with a wrench, can't get a socket on them. Um, the fuel filter is over here, you see it down under here. And uh, I was watching some videos one guy recommended you take the EGR valve out, clean the soot off the back end of it. If it gets too too dirty, it'll 
throw it into limp mode also. Well, I did that and uh, I didn't feel comfortable with putting the old gasket back on, so I bought a new one. Uh, this is the old one here. There's coolant runs across through this hose here and over to the other side, and, and I was concerned that this might leak here, so I bought a new gasket. Um, also, there's a guy did a video and he pointed out all the parts on the engine and really did a good job. The video name is under Bears Builds. I put that on my website. I'll share that information with you shortly. Um, I got a battery uh, maintainer. This is my motor home. It sits in the garage for months and I ruined the battery once because I didn't have a a battery minder to keep the battery charged. It drains so low that it wouldn't recharge. So, um, and I did a video on changing the coolant in the radiator. And when I did that video, I would come across a lot of bugs inside the radiator that uh, was really amazed. The bugs are actually going in through here, up here, and over here, and they're getting sucked in between these radiators, and after 120,000 miles, there's thousands of bugs caught in there, and uh, yeah, I'd recommend you watch that video. It's on my website, at realityrv2.com, um, and I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching.